What is up guys, it's Shu here, bringing you another review on Full Metal Panic, and I gotta say, it's only episode 2, but why do I feel like it's gone on forever? Like, I feel like we are getting so much in these two episodes that it's ridiculous. Like, we have gotten, it's fast-paced, and I'm loving every little bit of it, because it's truly uh, amazing how uh, the the story is going right now we have tessa like really really stepping up i mean you guys know that in the previous seasons tessa was all about jokes and she was all about you know trying to be cute around sosuke but i don't see an ounce of that right now like her people are dying the situation is only getting worse and they have had massive losses and you know it's it's crazy to see her still keep her composure at the very beginning of the episode and then at the end of the episode we see how she still like is proving to everyone that she is the one in charge like she had to prove this before in previous seasons and now again she's having to do that in front of everyone and she even had to embarrass one of her subordinates because of you know it, insubordination and at the same time, while all this is going on, I, I guess you would consider it stuff that's going behind the scenes. We have Chittery and Sosuke pretty much flee, fleeing for their lives. They're, they're really just having to tear up the city. They have to destroy, not on purpose, but they have to get away. Sosuke basically goes full ra Rambo. He is having to protect Chittery at all costs. And so it's just crazy how Sosuke is able to dodge and weave all of these you know uh, AS's uh, people that are just trying to kill him and people get hurt in the way and just the city overall is just in chaos uh, and while this is happening he's having to go full Rambo Chittery is losing it she is just scared she is we could see it in her face she doesn't want any of this but she doesn't have much of a choice it's just gotten to the point to where it's either you know kill or be killed uh, and and we saw how luckily al you know uh, sosuke's personal as was pretty much there to rescue them it was it was convenient but it was the perfect timing and they were able to get away but i feel bad for chittery i honestly do because someone like sosuke who is accustomed to seeing war we even said that's the way like he's used to this he's used to fighting but now people innocent people are getting involved and it's not just any random people it's people from chidori's home country she's there having to witness war in her own very in front of her own eyes and it's just it's crazy to think about and again we flip over to the situation that's going on with Tessa and the rest of the group and we're seeing once again this giant behemoth we hadn't seen it I believe since uh, season one uh, where that one kid was in one of these things and we're seeing the return of it and it's not just one it's three and what really sucks is that the situation is looking very bad for everyone uh, and we have Spec, who I don't remember uh, who he was before. I think he's just a character that was introduced now, who basically was telling everyone like, "We're basically going to die. Why don't we just kind of hand over Tessa to them?" I'm sure everyone has thought about this. You know, why not? Like, let's let's do that. And it sounded like he was, you know, treasonous. And of course, no one's really on board on what he's saying. And then, again, like I said, Tessa shows up, basically, uh, just asserting her dominance again and just telling them you know we are you know we are not going to die you have to survive you think that you know selling me out is going to solve anything you think that you know that i'm gonna i came down here to cry for sympathy no i'm not she even pulls out a gun to terrify him and show him like look we're going to get through this we are and I'm not sending out no one to die, nor have I ever, nor will I do that. And I thought that was really intense. It was an intense scene to watch. And I was, my major respects 
for Tess on this episode. Um, I felt very realistic. Like the person in charge always has to kind of put out this like front and where you have to, you know, be the calm for everyone. And Speck realizes his mistake, and it, it was it was intense. Like I said, it was an intense scene for everyone. I, even Mao and Kurtz were very surprised to see Tessa having this approach. But we're at war. We have no other choice. You have to. And uh, they go back to the plan. They joke off a little bit. Specs like, "All right, I apologize. I won't. I won't do it again." And it was like a, a wake up moment for him. And it looks like Kurtz is going to be the one to have to step up here. And I'm waiting to see what Kurtz can do. I really want to see his. Uh, his skills again and you know he's had experience against this behemoth and so he's going to be seen as the one to try to lead them to victory here and then we switch off back to what's going on in Tokyo and Kyoko has been kidnapped uh, I, do, I will say she looks very cute in this picture uh, though I don't really understand the point of you know unbuttoning her ribbon I mean her shirt and showing off her ribbon and whatever I thought that was completely unnecessary but now Sosuke and Chidori are having to confront, you know, the enemy. And the enemy is hitting them where it hurts the most. So I'm wondering where it's going, where, what Sosuke and Chidori are going to do. Uh, Sosuke might say something that Chidori may not like. Saying, we have to sacrifice who we have to sacrifice. And that's just it. But let me know your guys' thoughts on the... On the uh, on the episode what do you think is going to happen for the next episode and what do you guys think about the opening and the ending i i thought it was pretty cool i liked the ending more than the opening it was pretty cool but again let me know what you guys think and as always stay safe and i will catch you later <laughs>